Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to the channel. Today is an interesting one. Obviously, I'm talking about Christ and Infinite, Infinite Earth, mainly. Um, but first, I want to just say a big thank you to one of my good friends, Stuart, um, who recently sent me just a box of, of, of goodies. Um, so thank you very much for that. And I'm going to show you, it included uh, the Red Goblin Pop Toy. I am a big, big, big fan of the symbiotes. So when this, was it seven, I think it was uh, no, Spider-Man 797 to 800, I think it was. Um, there was the Green Goblin mixed with the Carnage suit created the Red Goblin. Um, it was a really, really good little, little series, um, little arc. And yeah, I highly enjoyed that actually. So that that was the first thing. The second was this amazing print of Spider-Man Venom. It's so cool. Um, with a little note from him, but I won't show that. Um, yeah, that's just really, really cool. And then <clears throat> here we have... Now, me and him, we talk all the time about the CW shows. Um, I have I did kind of go off of them a little bit. Uh, Arrow Series 1 I thought was great, Flash Series 1, 2, 3 was really good, Supergirl wasn't a big fan of, Batwoman I think I got 4 episodes in and got bored, uh, Legends of Tomorrow I think I got 2 series in, it was, eh, was alright, um, can't think of anything else now, uh, Black Lightning couldn't get into, I haven't checked out Stargirl yet, but I do need to. Anyway, so in terms of the crossovers, obviously they're mainly about the Arrowverse. So you've got Arrow, Flash, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, and then that included Batwoman as well. Um, and so the first one he got me was Elseworlds, and then the second one was Crisis on Infinite Earth. Now, I remember Elseworlds when that came out on TV. Uh, I, I enjoyed Elseworlds when it came out. I thought it was okay. Uh, Rewatching it. I, I was in, I enjoyed it a little bit more, but it was just it was there to set up Crisis, really, wasn't it? Um, there it is. That now I went into this. I desperately wanted to watch this when it came out on TV, but I never got around to it. I had fallen off track of all of the shows. I'd stopped watching Arrow, stopped watching Flash, stopped them all. And I was like, I need to get back into them just so I can watch this. Um, but when Stuart sent me these, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to watch it. So there, there was a few things that that maybe I, I didn't understand from being main parts of the series. A couple of characters that had been created or introduced that I wasn't too sure about. Um, but overall, I mean, that... Overall, that was really good. Really, really, really good. Um, so I do want to just talk about that a little bit. I'll pop these back up here out the way. Um... So, first things first, uh, there are some big, big, big cameos. I know I am late to the party with this. If you haven't seen Christ as an Infinite Earth um, and you don't want anything to be spoiled, come back later once you've watched it. If, you're, if you've seen it, if you're happy for me to spoil things, great. Um, one of the first things we see um, that really caught my eye was Burt Ward. Burt Ward from the Batman 19, was it 1966... Uh, animated series, animated? No, oh God, no. But the uh, live action series with uh, with Adam West, I I kind of grew up on that show. I did. Obviously, it was reruns. Obviously, um, but I loved that show so much. It was so camp, so incredibly over the top. It was fantastic. So seeing Burt Ward there, um, I can't even remember what he says. It's something on like, "Holy smokes, Batman!" or "Holy smokes!" It was it was one of his traditional Robin lines and I loved it. It was there for like two seconds, but it was great. I really, really loved it. Um the next the next big one for me, I had been wanting to see Brandon Ralph back in the Superman suit. I think he was a very, very good Superman. Obviously we've got Henry Cavill sort of at the moment. Um and Henry Cavill is probably one of the best, I would say. He's, he's, he's definitely up there. But Brandon Routh, I thought, was an incredible screen presence for the character of Superman. It's a big shame about the film. I did watch the film a lot. I did go see it a lot because at the time I was like, this is the Superman film that's out of the cinema. I can actually go and see. And so I went to see it a lot. But it's just... 
for me it was more about seeing the character of Superman. And it's unfortunate that it's it's it wasn't that great. It wasn't I really like Man of Steel. Now that is a big, big thing to say. I mean there's a lot of people that don't like that film. Um and I can kind of understand why there's a lot of people that do, and I'm right there with them. But seeing Brandon Routh back in back in the suit was fantastic and seeing him as like the kingdom come superman as well with like little white strands of hair it was it, it was it was nice to get that kind of closure on his character it really was so that and that obviously being the original christopher reeve superman as well so it was it was nice to to see that sort of well well rounded off um we obviously got i don't want to call, talk about superman all the time but but the tom welling superman um i actually quite enjoyed smallville wasn't a big fan of this like first sort of five or so series, but towards the end I thought it did pretty pretty good. Um, and again, I thought Tom Welling was actually a pretty good sort of Clark Kent Superman. So we didn't see him in the Superman suit, but it, it was it was fun and and funny to see him back as the character of Clark Kent. Um, I've written them all down because I can't I can't even remember. One of my biggest gripes with this biggest gripes. Batman the Animated Series, I grew up watching that constantly. I am a massive fan of the Animated Series. I love that show. And when Kevin Conroy was announced to be in this, I was a little bit dubious because, first of all, I was wondering, is it going to be a live action or are they going to do, because it's a crescent of an earth, are they going to actually have the animated? That would be kind of cool. Um, but it was live action. It was live action, and he's very sort of, old jaded batman uh has a chip on his shoulder pretty much against everyone he killed his version of superman and i didn't like that uh considering this i haven't looked at the numbers but i would say in terms of the 90s classic tv series where for me you had batman x-men and spider-man although i loved x-men and spider-man i think batman was more critically acclaimed, and I think it drew in the bigger audience. Don't quote me on that. I do have to do a bit more research on that. Um, but from what I remember, I think that was the case. Um, so to to diminish his character like that, it felt like a bit of a slap in the face, and and that was a big shame. Um, the, the, another big one was Ezra Miller. Now, I'm not a big fan of Ezra Miller. Don't particularly like the suit. For me, Flash is Grant Gustin. I, I think he's a brilliant Flash. I think he's done a fantastic job. And I wanted to see him within the DCEU, if I'm going to be completely honest. Um, it was it was kind of fun seeing them play off each other, those two. Um, and it was, it was kind of nice to see that tied into the, the DCEU. But, yeah, I mean, it was, it was just a fun little cameo. Uh, and obviously the one of the big ones for a lot of comic book nerds is Marv Wolfman, who was the writer of Crisis of Infinite Earths. Now, I have not actually read Crisis on Infinite Earths. It's one of the ones that's on my list of I need to desperately read it. But I have got it, um, and I am determined to read it over the next couple of months. When I get some time, I still have a lot of things to do. Um, but overall, this crossover was just just so much fun yes it was cheesy yes it was over the top as a lot of cw shows are um but it was just so much fun and i'm gonna be honest i wasn't a big fan of is it tyler hochin um his, uh, was it the is it superman and lois i think it's the superman and lois tv show that he's got at the moment i wasn't a big fan of his his superman but he's a relatively big part of the crisis on internet earth and i thought he did a pretty good job um he does play a couple of different versions of Superman, which is, is kind of fun. And I'm sure it was a blast for him to show off his like acting talents and what he can do with, with just like one character. Um, but it, it kind of got me excited for the for the TV show, to be honest. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. But look, I'm, I'm going to talk about Crisis. This was a lot of fun. Uh, it seemed like all the other crossovers had been set in motion and, and setting up everything to crisis on infinite earth and i've been waiting for that a lot of people have been waiting for that and 
overall, I don't think it did disappoint, to be honest. And it does exactly what it was meant to do. It, it, it pulls all of the multiverse into one to make it a bit, a bit easier to tell the stories. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it did a fantastic job. It was a great send-off for um, Stephen Amell, Oliver Queen. Again, he's he's done a fantastic job with Green Arrow. I thought that first series was was really 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 good, um, and it's it's I said I want to say it's a shame, but I suppose it's a it's a good way for him to bow out on a high. So it was a really really good one for him to do, and I don't know if they're going to be doing any more. If I'm honest, because I know uh, was it? Arrow has now finished, Supergirl has been cancelled. I don't know about... I don't think Flash has. But because of those, I'm not too sure if they're going to be able to do another crossover. Or if they do, it's going to be more of a Flash, which I'm, I'm, I don't mind. More more of a sort of a Flash-centric crossover, pulling those in if they can get them back in the contracts. However, if this is going to be the last one to, to cap off the CW Arrowverse, although I've not been catching up with the series... It was fun. It was, it was a good send off. So, like, if you get a chance to to watch Crisis and Infinite Earth, I would definitely suggest for you to to, to take that. Um, I would suggest watching Elseworlds first because it does set it up perfectly. Um, but look, guys, if you've read Crisis and Infinite Earths, or if you sorry, if you've watched Crisis and Infinite Earths, let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. Uh, it's always nice to hear from you guys, and. I'll see you all in the next video.